Hello, in this video I want to show you how to make use of Caden Live to make a perfectly synchronized video with multiple cameras and a PowerPoint presentation and high fidelity sound. The first thing you need is a sound registration system. I use a Zoom H5 and as you see I'm also recording this at this moment like that because I'm going to use the same technique for the video that I'm making at this moment. That one you have to connect to the hi-fi system of the room to make sure that you register directly from the microphones which have been set up in the room. Secondly, I make use of a simple camera that I put on the back of the room with on a tripod and I put it in such a way that I register the speaker and the projection of his presentation. Then I make use of a second video camera, which I also put on a tripod, to make a close-up of the speaker. This time it's a real video camera and not a photo camera, for the simple reason that a photo camera can only register 30 minutes of video. And you can come into trouble if the speech is taking more than half an hour. And then finally, I make use of a third camera, this time a Nikon Z7 camera, to make some close-ups some close and some uh, snapshots in the room or to make uh, shots from the speaker from another angle than the camera on the tripod. And finally, you also need the original PowerPoint presentation of the speaker because you will have to convert his slides into JPEGs, which you can integrate into the video. Make sure to do the conversion at a high enough resolution. Okay, that's the preparation. Now let's have a look how we are going to do that in Caden Live. We start by making a new project. In this project, we make four video tracks and six audio tracks. That's quite important in order to make it work. Then we will import the material. We have made a map with the different kinds of material in it. Audio material, pictures, the videos from one camera, the presentation, video from the other camera and video from yet another camera. So we start with the audio. In the audio we have already edited our material by means of Audacity. And then we take the final result of that editing and we put it into our project bin. We will also enter our startup jingle, one audio file and one video file that will make a, a short introduction of six seconds. We put our introduction jingle into different tracks. The audio on track six of the audio tracks and the video of it into track four. Then on audio track five, we put our audio track. Yeah, yeah thank you well, um, Stefan. Uh, so now we will make our audio as the audio reference. Just right click and select the menu Set Audio Reference. The system will analyze this track and then that takes a little while. And when it has finished, we can start adding other video material into our project. So now we can add the video of the overview camera into the system. So you see there are four videos. We will add them into the project bin. And then we put them on track number one. So then I make the video a bit shorter 
in the front so that it cannot spill over on the left. And then right click and select Align Audio to Reference. Now the system will start to analyze the audio track and find its reference to the reference track. So when it has finished analyzing, you will see that this video will move into the place where it has to be with the audio track. And then when you play both, you will hear no echo. Um, yeah, loop nu al as you can hear, vooruit, maar in which means that both tracks are, are perfectly looping. aligned. Uh, so now it's important to mute miracles, the audio track of the reference so that you only hear the audio that is coming directly from the microphones. And as you hear, sound is now much better than before and it's still synchronous. So now we do the same thing with the second track. I will cut the part of the analysis. But what you will see here now is that it will also be moved to where it has to be. And as you see, there is a little gap between the two videos. The reason is that I had to stop it when the 30 minutes were done of this camera and then start over again. So there is a little gap, but in fact, that is not a problem because these video tracks are only going to be used to align the slides. So there is the last one. We analyze it also, and as you will see, the system will also align it to our audio track. So now you right click on the video track and you select thumbnails, show thumbnails for all frames. This way you can see a consecutive list of snapshots from the video so that you can better align the PowerPoint afterwards. Okay, so now we are ready to integrate the PowerPoint. So we take all the JPEGs that we have made up from the presentation and we integrate them into our project bin. And now we can start searching for the place where the second slide is coming into vision. So we can look in our timeline by moving our cursor until we see, as you can see on the right hand corner, where the next slide starts. At the end, you press the left and the right arrow on your keyboard to find exactly the correct frame. Once you found it, you can put your slide on that place and then we look for the next transition. So then we find where the third slide will start and you can see that by the transition of the frames on your screen. It must be between the lines of the last snapshot that you see where the old slide was. And between those two points you can move until you find the exact place. So we found it, we stretch the slide. and we can start with the next slide. So we put it in there and then we scroll our slide. We stretch it until we are at the end. And there we are again at the last picture of the last frame. So it must be somewhere in that place and we have found it. That's the place where we have to be. We put the next slide, etc., etc., and that you can do quite fast by looking at the frames of your overview video. And they are coming all after the, the one after the other. Next, we take the videos from the camera with which we took the close-ups from the speaker. And again, we start over on video track 3 where we put the first one again we will crop it at the beginning and that's about it and then 
again here we right click on it and then align to audio the system makes the analysis and then puts the track where it belongs we can also do that with the other ones but i'm not going to show that because it's the same thing but uh, then what we want to do is we want to inset the speaker in the slide how do you do that so we put two effects into this video track transformation and crop on the place where the first slide starts we put a keyframe on both effects and then we go to three seconds further you can do that by pushing the shift and the right arrow on your keyboard there we put another keyframe both for the crop and for the packaging and now on that keyframe we start by cropping the presentation using the handles on the effect okay so a bit smaller we will put him in the atlantic ocean And then, with transformation, we make the speaker a little bit smaller and we put him in the middle of the cropped frame so that we can see him again. So that's about the good size. Now move it a bit to the left. And there he is. Okay, that's good. Okay, so let's try to see how it works. Ik hoop dat u ook het verhaal over Lourdes boeiend zal vinden. Voor de mensen die het niet zouden weten, maar iedereen weet het waarschijnlijk wel. Lourdes ligt aan de voet van de Pyreneeën in het zuiden, zuidwesten van Frankrijk. So that looks okay. For the next slide, of course, the location of the speaker is not okay, so we will cut the presentation there in two, and here we change the, the crop and the transformation to that small hole in the slide that we have foreseen to put him in. So that's also an important reason why you need the original slides, because you want to manipulate them, because if they are too full of texts and pictures, you have no place anymore to put the speaker in and then you have to reorganize the slides so that's also something that i did here and as you see now he's there and then we will put a fade in fade out into it so that the transition is a bit smoother and then you get these kinds of effects Okay. In het Occitaans heet Lourdes Lorda. Dat is niet onbelangrijk dat Occitaans. Dat is dus uh, ja, de verzamelnaam voor de dialecten die in die regio gesproken. So the next effect that we will do, we will also change a bit our introduction with the fade out, so that you can see that this changes like that. Then the last thing that we have to do is introduce the videos of the last camera so that we can also put some pictures into another And then again, the same story as before. We put the video into the system. We right click 
align audio to reference and the system will analyze the data and it will move the video to where it belongs. And there it is gone far away. So let's look where it's gone. There it is. Let's see if it's synchronized. So as you can in see, the 11th, the 12th, the eve, in the middle eve was that it's synchronized. So now we have to mute all the audio channels except, of course, our main audio channel. In this way, you don't have any reverb. Um, that, that, that is a whole a little fade in. So I made all these videos all alone, but it looks like if we were there with three uh, camera people making videos from all the sides, and it looks much more professional than when you are showing everything from the same angle. And then you can play with it around, for example, by cutting the top one so that the, the one below becomes visible again. And then a bit later you do again something else, etc. etc. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed that. And, uh, if you want to see uh, the complete result of it, I will put a link to the final result in the notes of this video.